This video is about why elements bond together to create chemical compounds. To uh, start with exploring this question, I will have to draw uh, the periodic table of elements. If you want to talk about why elements form chemical bonds, uh, we have to have a quick look at the modern periodic table. In the modern periodic table, the elements are ordered by ascending atomic number or number of protons and are grouped in uh, the columns so that each column, each group, has similar uh, chemical characteristics. One of these groups has a very particular chemical characteristics. This group is called the noble gases. What is so special about those noble gases, uh, they rarely form any bonds uh, to build compounds. So one could choke that they're too noble uh, to mingle with any other elements. They're always, or most of the time, staying alone by themselves, like helium, neon, argon. You will find these atoms usually all alone not in any compound. Now, why is that so? Uh, the answer to that is a bit more complicated. Uh, it appears uh, like uh, these noble gases have a more stable electron configuration than all the other elements. So if we talk about electron configuration, uh, we have to talk about valence electrons. What are valence electrons? Those are the electrons that can participate in creating these chemical bonds. Uh, in our periodic table, it's quite simple to figure out uh, the number of valence electrons. Group one has one valence electrons, group two has two. This one here has three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for the noble gases, except helium, which only has two. Now here, between for those metals, it's complicated. And down here, I don't want to talk about it. And what I mean by it's complicated actually is that our simplified Rutherford Bohr atomic model is not able to explain what's going on here. We need a more uh, advanced quantum based atomic model to understand what's going on. So for the moment, we simply, we simply leave those out and we concentrate on what we can explain with the Rutherford Bohr atomic model. So just to make sure the numbers I wrote here are not the group numbers that you would usually find at this position in a periodic table, but what I wrote here is the number of valence electrons. Now, as I said before, uh, the noble gases, they tend to not form any compounds because their electron configuration of having eight valence electrons, or two in the case of helium, uh, seem to be more stable. Now, what's interesting is that all the other elements, what they try to do is they try to get the same electron configuration, which is called the octet rule. All the elements try to get the noble gas electron configuration. Depending on where these elements are in the periodic table, how they achieve noble gas configuration, the easiest way, is different. For example, all those that are close to the right side, the easiest way for them to get noble gas configuration is to get more valence electrons. So if you're nitrogen, you already have five, you want to have one, two, three more to have the same electron configuration as neon. So those elements that are in this corner here, more to the right, that can get noble gas electron configuration by getting more electrons are called the non-metals. Then on the other side, like everything down here, it is simpler to lose electrons. So if lithium, for example, gives up one uh, valence electron, then it will appear and look like the electron configuration of helium and noble gas, so it will be happy. So all of those down here, the metals, they tend 
to lose uh, valence electrons to obtain the noble gas electron configuration. The exception here is hydrogen, which we write here, but it's actually not a metal, it's a non-metal, and it will try to gain a valence electron in order to appear like helium. In between, we have a couple of elements. They're having both options. Uh, for them, it's about the same to gain electrons or to lose electrons. So they can uh, act like non-metals or they can act like metals depending on the situation they're in. Now the question is, how do the metals and non-metals do this? Now the easiest case is if a metal gets together with a non-metal. The metal gives up some electrons, the electrons transfer to the non-metal and we create what's called an ionic bond. Door number two is if a non-metal gets together with another non-metal, so none of them uh, wants to get rid of their electrons, both want more. So what they can do, they can share electrons between each other and that way form what we call a covalent bond and in this way get noble gas electron configuration. Now the third option is metals getting together with other metals. So none of them wants electrons, they only get rid of electrons. So what they do, they push their electrons a bit further away in what we call the electron cloud. So these electrons are not directly attached to the metal anymore, which have the interesting effect that they can move quite easily throughout the substance, which is why usually metals are good electric conductors. That's a quick overview of why elements bond to form compounds. The quick and short answer is they form compounds in order to achieve the electron configuration of the noble gases.